All right, I want to extend greetings to you all in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. His blessings and peace be upon each of us as we follow him and do his will. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. We just ask your blessing upon us. Help us be faithful to you and bring glory to you. Fill us with your spirit and give us wisdom. We thank you for this. We ask all this in the precious name of our Lord. Amen. All right. Let's open our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Again in verse 1. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may be well with you that you may live long on the earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them in the, up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in the sincerity of your heart as to Christ. Not by way of eye service as men pleasers, but as slaves of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. With good will render service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing each one does, he will receive back from the Lord whether slave or free. And masters, do the same thing to them and give, up, and give up threatenings, knowing that both their master and yours is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. All right, I want to uh, address a couple of things. Uh, maybe we could call it proper relationships. Um, I want to talk about fathers and their responsibilities, but before I do that, I want to uh, bring out to those who are all of us in, in one way or another that it says that uh, to honor your father and mother it says, children, obey your parents. In Hebrews chapter 13, it says, obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch for your soul. There's several places in the Bible where it talks about submitting to those who are in authority over you. And I've heard this. And most people, when they hear this, they have a reaction. I'm not listening to anybody. They're just trying to force something down me. They're just trying to, to be a ruler over me. We live in a country where we have everything we need. There's a verse, I uh, just read it this morning in, uh, in Wisdom, Wisdom of Sirach. It talks about servants and it tells how to deal with servants. And it tells the master, make him work. And then it goes on and says, when he doesn't work, he'll have idle time and he'll want to be free. He'll want to, he'll want to disrupt and cause all kinds of problems. And we have that problem in this country today. We have everything we need. And it's very difficult for us to listen to anybody or to submit to anything because we just don't have to. We can just go do our own thing. And so it just breeds rebellion. And that rebellion is grounded in Christianity. That idea where I don't have to listen to anybody. That I, I'm on my own. I've got a Bible. I can figure it out myself. I don't have to listen to anybody. 
And that is nothing but pure rebellion. And it is not biblical. There's nothing Christian about it at all. You know, most people think that because a, a leader stands for what's right, a righteous man stands for what's right, a rebel just stands against the tide. There's one that has principles that it's, they can flow. They can, they, they're not just being against or they're not just being contrary. They're just doing what's right and they just keep on doing it no matter what the circumstances or the consequences or the tide that comes happens. But then there's people that just do the opposite of what they're told. There's people that just rebel and are against everything because that's their nature. That nature of just pure rebellion. I've heard these messages preached and almost all my life it says submit and it's usually by someone who's trying to make you listen to them. Even in the situations where the father is, is talking to the wife, he said, wife, submit to me. And it's in that area, it's, it's the man trying to just force his dominion over someone. And that's what m the majority of this, these verses are used for, is to give someone the opportunity to force their will on someone else. But in the Bible, this, whenever it talks about to submit to those who are in authority of, over you, it's not given a club to the one in authority. It's talking to the person that's under. And it says, submit to those who are in authority over you. It's not, it's not to give power to the man in authority. And that's the way it's always used. But it is a principle that is completely forgotten and neglected among most Christianity because I'm not going to listen to anybody. I've got a Bible. I can figure it out myself. But that submission is for you to keep you from being a rebel, to keep you in a place, in a proper place. God has an order. God has a way to make things work. And it is always, He always has used a man and he always has people submitting to that man. Not because he's a ruler or a dictator, but because for our own sakes, keeping in God's order, just like honoring your father and your mother. You do this for the Lord's sake, just like being a servant or being a slave. Whenever you're a proper servant, it doesn't matter what the person over you is doing or putting on you. If you have the right attitude and the right spirit about it, they can't hurt you. Not at all. They can't deceive you. They can't force you into believing anything when you have a right heart. But everyone's so afraid of someone having someone over them. They're afraid. They're scared because their heart isn't right. That's the problem. They're afraid of being deceived because they don't know what they trust in. Whenever a person is trusting in the Lord, he's not going to be deceived. When a person is trusting and walking and doing what's right, there is nothing on earth that's going to deceive them. But people are scared to death that they're going to be deceived by a leader because they don't have that trust in what's right in the beginning. That was just kind of the, the free part here. What I want to talk about is fathers. Fathers. See, the reason we have fathers is because children need to know and need to learn how to honor their father, how to respect their father, how to obey their father. And I want to give some instruction about proper relationships. You children know your part. The young people know their part. <clears throat> and it's easy to blame the father. But you know your part. And if you do your part, it'll all work out. Even if you have a terrible father. 
You honor and respect him. That is your part. Wives, you honor and respect your husband. That is your part. What he does with that is none of your business. Your business is to honor and respect him. And it's just that simple. He can't hurt you if you do what you're supposed to do. That's the problem. If everyone would just take the little bitty part in the bottom, that's where the foundation is, down low here. Foundations are on the bottom. Strong things come when the bottom pieces are doing what they're supposed to do. Then you can build on that and you can build something good on it and strong on it. But if you get that bottom, you get the foundation all messed up, you don't have anything. We have so many people that have a Christianity in their head. They've got it all figured out. Boy called me this week and said, oh, I'm learning so much. I'm doing so much. And began talking to him a little more. And a little while later, he told me, well, I just walked off my job. I worked for two weeks and I just got so discouraged and so depressed. I just walked away from it. Don't even have enough courage or or anything just to stay put with something for a little while and that's all we've ever tried to do to teach young people just stay put right where you are you don't have to set the world on fire the fact is if you set the world on fire and you don't have that foundation you ain't got nothing but a bunch of burnt up brush and smoke it's all gone you get that foundation built, and then whatever little bitty thing that you might be able to build will stand, will last. But the rest will all go up in smoke. That's why we teach, try to teach young men and people, young people, people that come, don't worry about all your theology. You be solid. You be faithful. You be diligent. That's your part. Fathers, you are the overseer of your family. You are the overseer of your family. You know, people react. They react foolishly. Whenever you talk about this, the first thing most fathers will do will go, I've got to really crack down and I've got to get strict now. I've got to really discipline the children. I've seen people over and over just up and down, up and down. They go for a while and the children just run wild and then they get all mad and then they just beat them and beat them and beat them for their own pleasure, I guess. But then the next week, they're going wild again. Unstability. The father, you are the stabilizer. That doesn't mean you just go, that doesn't mean you get stricter and stricter and stricter and stricter. Not at all. The Bible says to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Not to be a dictator. Not just to be a good disciplinarian. Anybody can do that. But it takes courage and it takes wisdom to actually bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And it takes diligence it takes consistence consistent and beaten no what you need to do as an overseer is to pay attention to your children pay attention to them you should know your children better than everybody else the problem is you don't, for the most part. Everybody else can see your children and how they act and how they do and how rude they are or whatever they are, but you don't see it because you don't know them. All you're doing is disciplining them. All you're doing is trying to make them not embarrass you. Or maybe you're doing something else. Maybe you're occupied with something else and you're not paying attention to them. You need to know your children. You need to know their weaknesses. And you need to be faithful and diligent in correcting those things. 
You don't need just to let it go and just so they aren't causing trouble, just so they aren't fighting, it's all right. Just, oh, they got their chores done, I ain't worried about them. No. You need to be watching them. You know, we were talking about just training a dog. You know, training a dog is no real trick. What you do is you just catch the dog doing something you want it to do, and you put a name on it, and you begin to associate whatever they're doing with that name. But you have to pay attention to that animal and watch it and so that you can begin to learn its mannerisms, and then you be can begin to mold them and shape them the way they need to be. You can put a name on fetch. You can put a name on come. You catch them coming running at you, you say come, and they begin to figure out that that's how it works because you're trying to know what, how to control them, how to, how to make them do what you want them to do, how to, how to train them in a way that they'll respond to you. People know their dogs better than they do their children. They put more emphasis on how, how to do that than they do their children. When you, you see your children, you watch them. You learn. Most of us see our children, and whenever they become unruly, we'll just get right after it. But then we get distracted. We don't see what they're doing. We don't watch them. We don't pay attention to them because we're distracted. The problem is, is your children aren't distracted. They're watching you and they know just exactly when they can get away with what you don't want them to do. They catch you busy. They catch you talking about the Lord. They catch you doing all kinds of things. They know you're distracted. And they know they can fly right under the radar and get away with a lot of things. Why? Because you are not paying attention. You are more focused on something that's more important than your children. It's not that hard to know somebody and to pay attention to them. The problem is a lot of times we don't want to accept what other people see in our children. We don't want to hear that. Because we don't like it. It's ugly. And so we don't we we want to avoid that. We don't want to see that. So we close our eyes to it. Oh, it'll be okay. Well it won't be okay. It'll grow. It'll grow. And it'll get worse. And you'll just have to get you close closer, close your eyes more and more and more. You, fathers, are the overseers. You need to be paying attention to what the children are doing. Your goal as a father is to do what's best for your children, whether they like it or not. You see, God doesn't call you to be your children's best buddy. He doesn't call you to be a buddy to your children. He calls you to be a father. A father. An overseer. Watching out for what's best for them. It's easy to entertain them. It's easy to keep them happy. Just give them whatever they want. That's easy. That's fun. And you know what? In a place where what you want is readily available, that's no big problem. And that can all look just fine. Everything can be just happy. Everybody getting along great because we're all getting what we want. What if we had hard times? What if there wasn't an opportunity to do all the fun things? Would our families look so fun and happy and all peaceful then? Or would it get, or would we begin to see what's really in there? But we can keep it all smoothed over with nice and easy. 
But whenever we go to getting difficult things, we go to trying to mold them and try to correct them, you know what? You start seeing what comes out. That's when you need to go to work. And you need to be operating in a way that will bring those things out so that you can work on them, not just smoothing them all over. That's what a leader does. Whether it's in the church, whether it's in the family, the leader doesn't just fix everything and keep things smoothed over. Sometimes things kind of got to happen so that people can learn to make these choices on their own. You need to know your children. You need to know what they're doing, what they're thinking. You need to be smarter than they are. You need to be a step ahead of them. They used to talk about mothers having eyes in the back of their head. Why did they say that? Why did they think mothers had eyes in the back of their head? Because that mother knew just where Johnny was and what he was doing because she knew him. Do you understand that? She didn't have to be told. A little birdie told me he was up to no good. I know where he's going to be. And I know, well, it's about time for him to sit down and start goofing off. You step out the door right before he takes the step away and say, where are you going? Are you getting done? Because you know what they're going to be doing next. This is your responsibility as an overseer. They need to know that. They need to know that there's somebody looking out for them and watching over them. They need to know that. That makes people strong. That gives someone real direction that they can build on in their life. It looks like you're just really clamping down on them but that's building character in them. That is what's going to stand. Anybody can make a drone. Anyone can just beat their children into little mush robots that don't do anything but yes, yes, yes. That's not what we're after. Mold them. Let them make decisions. Let them learn that there's consequences for decisions they make. Let them build this character. That's what an overseer does. He's not a controller. Most people think that anyone that tries to give any direction is just someone trying, they're trying to control me. They're just trying to force me into this. That comes from just People missing it, missing what real submission and what real obedience and what real character building comes from. They miss that. We live in a country of just pure rebels. We live in a world of just pure rebels. We need to have our children be respectful. Not just to their parents, but to everyone. Kind. They need to listen. Be quick to help. Be quick to jump in. Not just resent it every time someone asks something from them. That's what it, what it means. It says, don't provoke fathers. Don't provoke your children to anger. But bring them up in the discipline and nurture of the Lord. We're not trying to raise just a bunch of rebels that are just going against the tide. We're trying to raise young men and young women that can follow the Lord right in the middle of a wicked world and have the courage and the fortitude and the strength and the submissiveness and the humility just to stand and to walk on and to do what's right 
and not be worried so much about what everybody else is doing, but to take care of themselves. And they need to have a good attitude about it. You know, one of the only things that you can control in your life is your attitude. You can't control the circumstances. You can't control the situations. You can't control the storms. You can't control anything about all those things. But one thing you can control is your attitude about it. And your children need to know that. They need to have the jer rug jerked out from under them once in a while. And then be taught that they can still be happy. They can still be happy about it. They can do their work. They can do whatever's asked of them and be content and happy about it. Those are the things you can instill if you know them. If you know them. You need diligence, and you need consistency. Not just because I'm going to train them, because you know them. It's so easy to be, to go into a legalistic thing. It's so easy to go overboard one way or another, and up and down, and up and down, and up and down. But to actually just come out and say, I'm going to know my children, and I'm going to learn them, and I'm going to bring them up in the nurture, and just do it. That's your responsibility, fathers, to know them. Mothers, your responsibility is to carry that out. Carry that out. You know your children. You need to learn that your children are walking all over you if you're letting them. And you need to learn how to stop it. It might take some drastic measures. They may think you're killing them. But you've got to stop it. If they're manipulating you, they will manipulate somebody else later in their life and you're teaching them those things that's how you destroy your children we're trying to raise children that are like the Lord children that are trying to be in the image of the Lord trying to love their neighbor as their self but if you're raising a bunch of little manipulators because you don't have the strength or the you're afraid they won't like you or some other problem that's not weakness. That's pure poison to your children. And I know it's hard sometimes. You're tired, mothers. It's hard. And you don't want your children unhappy. But this is in your hands. You have to do it. No one else will. It doesn't matter how good the father is doing, watching and seeing, Whenever he's gone, and he will be, you are the responsible one to carry that out. And you can undermine and destroy everything that he's trying to do. Destroy it. It's up to you. Your children's souls are in your hands, mothers. It's hard enough to raise them up and let them make a choice on their own. You know, we're not even hoping to save all of them. We hope that we would, we hope they would. But in reality, we know that they're an individual and they will make a choice on their own. And at the best that we can do in this world, 
doing the best we can, they still have to choose. But if you, fathers and mothers, are undermining that by not being diligent, by not being faithful, by being too soft, by letting them manipulate you, by letting them push you around, they may wind up being religious, but they'll be in some circle somewhere manipulating, pushing, twisting other people just like they did you because you've trained them that way. They may look religious. They may look all wonderful on the outside, but they're pulling those strings underneath being a manipulator because they know what they can get away with because they're flying under the radar because mom and dad didn't care enough about them to know them and to stop them from stuff like that. You look at your children. You look at them how they play with other children. You watch them. You know what they're doing. You need to pay attention whenever they're in church, whenever they're free time. What are they doing? Most of us don't even know what they're doing. But the person that gets shoved out of the way because they're in a big hurry playing a game or gets their toes stepped on or gets pushed away or gets smarted off to, they know. Do you? Do you? Or is it just no big deal? It is a big deal. It is a big deal. If everyone does their part, we can build a foundation. But if you start neglecting the foundation on those little ends, there'll be a big hole in the foundation and it'll crumble. It might not in this life, but it won't pass the judgment day. Are you listening to what your children say? Are you listening to the little attitude your children have? Maybe they're saying little smart things about their father. Maybe they're saying little things, you know, maybe they're criticizing. Maybe they're doing those things about their father. Where is that coming from? Where does that come from? Maybe daddy just don't know too well. Maybe daddy just didn't smart enough to figure that out. Maybe whatever. But listen to the attitude your children have. Is there respect in it? Is there honor in it? Or is there superiority and rebellion in it? Whenever someone tells your children to do what to do, does it upset them? Can anybody correct your children when they're wrong? Or has it only got to be the one with the biggest stick? You need to know these things. And all it takes is effort. All it takes you don't have to have all the smarts in the world. You don't have to have all the education. You don't have to have... you got your children. Learn them. Watch them. Pay attention to them. Ask for wisdom. God will give it. Promised He would. You don't have to go fix it right now because, oh boy, the preacher really, he preached a real message on it. I'm going to go fix everything, boom, right now. That'll last about two days. And it's just another one of those up and down, up and down, unstable, unsteady things. But you can start paying attention to your children.
And it doesn't, you don't, it's not going to take all day studying them. You don't have to be a scientist. You just watch them. Each one of them. Pay attention to them. I don't know how many times I've been talking with people, brethren, and they'll be, their children will be right there. And mom or dad is just off in La La Land. Pretty soon the child's just gone, climbing up, just swinging things. Everybody's watching this child and the father and the dad or the mother don't even see a thing. Just because they're distracted, not paying attention. If a child can't honor his father and his mother, he won't honor anyone. It starts right there. You know, children ought to have respect for older people. They ought to have respect for their elders. They ought to have respect for their leaders. They ought to have respect for policemen. They ought to have respect for anybody, their boss. They ought to have respect. And if they respect their parents and honor them, they will have it. If they're not respecting and showing respect for everyone, they're not honoring their parents. You know what? No matter how holy they may appear, they're not honoring God. If we cannot instill in our children respect and honor for our parents and an authority, you can't instill respect and honor for God. If they can't respect a man right in front of them, how are they going to respect a God who they can't see? Is it in a popularity contest? This is instilling great things in your children. It's just going to take some time. It's just going to take some effort. You begin seeing those things. You begin observing those things that you don't like. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You're shaping them. We're not hoping just to have a bunch of religious rebels. This is going to have to, you have to work together. It just, sometimes it just blows my mind of how a mother, that God has given the ability to a mother to absolutely destroy her children. And it's just, Lord, why would you give that much power? to a woman to ab absolutely be able to destroy their, their children are going to trust them. They're going to trust her. It's natural. And that mother can just take those children and just completely destroy them. And there's nothing we can do about it. That father can take those children and completely destroy them. <coughs> and we got to live with it. we got to try to pick up the pieces over and over again of a father and mother destroying their own children. The one they look up to and honor and are supposed to honor and respect and trust, and they just take them and destroy them. But you have the same ability to do good with it. To do good with it. You have the same power to build something good there just like people have the same power to destroy. You have it. Be aware of it. Be diligent with it. Be faithful in what God has given you.
Lord add his blessings.
Yeah.